sister, I got a rhyme. Here's the church, here's the steeple. Open up the doors and see all the people. What is a Catholic parish anyway? Is it beautiful buildings, a fine pastoral staff, or is it people? People praying together, working together, serving together, bringing Christ's love to each other, to neighbors, everyone? Central to Catholic worship is, of course, the Eucharist. But even the very act of getting together is a blessing because Jesus said, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. We, the parishioners of the Catholic community of St. Joseph the Worker, are a people of God blessed by a diversity of gifts to carry on the work of Jesus. We commit ourselves to be a Eucharistic people, gathering to worship and praise God. We commit ourselves to be an apostolic people, enabling each person to grow spiritually so that we can invite others to know the good news of Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves further to use our gifts in serving each other with a caring spirit, reaching out to the needs of our families, our parish, and our community. The story begins in a small rural town between Cleveland and Medina at the close of World War II. Although there had long been two Protestant churches here, there was no church in Strongsville for the 150 Catholic families in the area. Even worse, in the mind of Grace O'Grady, the mother of a newly arrived Catholic family from Cleveland, there was no Catholic school to which she could send her children. Father Dennis O'Grady, who was one of those children, recalls. My mother uh, uh, got a bright idea one day. She figured, uh, even though she, who was of German ancestry, uh, had a good Irish name, that she might write a letter to Archbishop Holbin uh, and uh, perhaps get a school bus to take uh, the Strongsville kids to the Catholic school in Berea. That was her main interest. And so she sat down and uh, penned a short letter to Archbishop Holbin appraising uh, him of the situation <laughs> in Strongsville. This is the letter my mother wrote to the bishop uh, somewhere in late 1945, early 46. Most Reverend Bishop, I wonder if you know about the condition that exists in Strongsville. It's a small town in the vicinity of Route 42, Wooster Pike, the Catholic people must go to Berea, which is from six to eight miles away, to church, and the children must go to a public school because there is no transportation from Strongsville to Berea. The result was the uh, Archbishop investigated and decided to establish uh, St. Joseph's Parish uh, in Strongsville. Fresh from three years of service in World War II as an army chaplain, Father Joseph J. McGraw was made pastor of the new parish on June 19, 1946. It was a fortunate choice, for this priest proved to be bold, confident, and enthusiastic, yet kind, innovative, and frugal too. Just what this parish needed. Holding his first parish organization meetings in the town hall, as well as the first parish mass here on June 30, 1946, Father McGraw resolved to have St. Joseph Church up and operating by Christmas. The people could do it themselves, he said, on the proverbial shoestring. The men could do it the army way, by working together nights and weekends to erect a war surplus Quonset hut as a church, just as the army had put up these useful temporary buildings around the world during the war. And they did do it by Christmas, with the women creating a most beautiful altar inside the metal hut. Exactly 49 years later, on December 24, 1995, Father Bob Sanson, St. Joseph's pastor, recalled that remarkable night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy anniversary. And good luck. I'd like you to go back in memory tonight, 49 years. Our anniversary committee has chosen this midnight mass to begin our year-long celebration of our 50th anniversary, the first time that Father McGraw and the first parishioners of St. Joseph the Worker Parish celebrated the birth of Christ on this property. And usually we think of bad luck 
opening up an umbrella inside. But tonight I'd like you to think of it as good luck because the first church was very simple. Father McGraw was an army chaplain. He had just gotten out of the Second World War and the bishop told him to start a parish here in Strongsville. In June, they got the property, Clementine tells me. I learned a lot of stories from Clementine Werfel this week. She was his first housekeeper and here on this property for about 47 years. And Clem tells me that between June and Christmas Eve, the parishioners themselves built a church, a Quonset hut church. That's something they use in the military. It's just big ribs that you have to put up and the skin, I guess, is sheet metal. And the roof was done and temporary chairs were in the church, but there was no insulation in the ceiling. That meant bare metal and all the condensation of Christmas Eve rose to the ceiling and dripped back down <laughs> as rain. <laughs> and yes, a number of people came to that first midnight mass with umbrellas. <laughs> Serving the first midnight mass was Grace O'Grady's son, Dennis, who became head altar server and the first priestly vocation of St. Joseph's. Just 14 years later, he would say his own first mass in the humble St. Joseph Quonset Hut Church. Today, Father O'Grady is himself a pastor of St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Cleveland. Hey, uh, working for the church is uh, a tremendous experience. It's extremely rewarding, and I invite uh, all young men and women to consider a religious vocation. You can't beat the Lord for a boss. Grace O'Grady's dream of a Catholic education for the children was on the way to reality right from the start. Father McGraw invited the Sisters of St. Joseph to come teach religion, train servers, and do church and choir work. After four summers, long before he even considered building a new and permanent church, Father McGraw opened St. Joseph's School, comprised of four classrooms and a parish hall for 160 children, with Sister Marguerite as principal. And by 1955, the school was enlarged to 12 rooms staffed by eight sisters and four lay teachers serving nearly 500 children. Father McGraw never lived to see a new permanent church at St. Joseph's, but this was the kind of man who knew that people, not buildings, were his parish. He died of a heart attack in St. Joseph's Rectory on October 13, 1962, at age 55, 30 of those years as a priest. Just what kind of man was he? Clementine Werfel knew him well as the St. Joseph housekeeper from the early years. One day, Clem recalls, Father McGraw went to downtown Cleveland and saw a beggar with no shoes. Father didn't have any cash on him, so he took off his own shoes and gave them to the beggar. He came home in stocking feet. Clem herself contributed much love to the parish family, not only by cooking and cleaning so long and so well, but by planting and tending those beautiful roses in the rectory garden over most of the last half century. Clem even planted a sapling which became the great and beautiful maple tree beside the brick building that was originally the rectory and is now the sisters' convent. The tree is truly rooted in love, and every one of her visits back here reflects that love. <laughs> So what is a Catholic parish? Yes, it can include beautiful buildings, but Clementine remembers well how the new St. Joseph Church was just about ready to occupy when on April 11, 1965, the Strongsville tornado struck. Miraculously, it didn't touch the new church, but it did destroy the parish hall and eight school classrooms and the beloved Quonset Hut Church. The entire Strongsville community came to the aid of St. Joseph's after the disaster, and much of the pain of the parish was also relieved when the new pastor, Father James P. McDonough, offered the first Mass in the new church less than three weeks later. So what is a parish? Yes, it includes hopefully a fine staff of clergy, religious, and lay ministers. 
But the most important element is, without doubt, people. People praying together, working together, playing together, bringing Christ's love to the world. And at St. Joseph's, it happens in almost countless ways. What's the secret of a successful parish? Involvement, not simply in Sunday Mass, but in the many, many opportunities at St. Joseph's to do something extra for God as part of the family. CIA on the team. I'm Paul Butterfield. My daughter's involved with the Kids Praise. My name is Dan Sater. I've been in the parish about 19 years and I'm in uh, Legion of Mary. My name is Linda Souter and I'm also in the Legion of Mary and uh, helped uh, with the core group for adoration here at St. Joseph's. In fact, we encourage everyone to come. And uh, my husband and I have two sons and we've been in the parish for about 22 years. I'm Ruth Doman, I'm in the St. Joseph Choir. I'm a cantor and a lector. Bob Aylard, I'm on the 50th anniversary committee. Lenora Shinaki, I teach PSR, I'm a Eucharistic minister. What else do I do? Uh, I work fish fries, I work the parish picnic, and I helped her make the banners. <laughs> and I represent the Respect Life Committee at St. Joseph's Church. Paul Gerhardstein, this is my wife, Kara, and uh, well, I drive the motor coach for the uh, Christmas tour, at the Christmas lighting tour at Christmas time. And we've been uh, parishioners at uh, St. Joe's since uh, what, 66? 30 years. So quite a long, long time. My name is Nancy Ayler. I uh, do hospitality and uh, things around. 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. My name is Tony Mariano. I'm an usher. 1039. I'm Sister Rita Mackert, and I've been here at St. Joe's for 27 years. I've been teaching the first grade in the day school and the PSR I teach the second grade. I'm in the choir. I also am a cantor and I've been in with the sacramental programs helping out with the, the Holy Family. My name is Rosanna Darby and we've been in the parish for four years and I'm Eucharistic Minister. I'm Gene Hill, son plays keyboard for the 12 o'clock mass. I'm Tony LaBianca, uh, this is Mindy LaBianca, and we do lighting uh, for Kids Praise Productions, and my wife, Mindy, you tell them what you do. And I teach Sunday school for the five-year-olds for the past four years. We got me. Hello, I'm Esther Borges, and I've been in the parish for 40 years, and I'm, my ministry is Legion of Mary, Bereavement, and open arms. My name is Connie Ginter and I've just recently joined the Children's Liturgy of the Word group on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock and come on down and join us. We have a real good time. Don't we guys? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Joseph Parrish means to me an experience of God. We talk about God and uh, sometimes we find him as abstract and distant, but it's through people, through their love for one another, through their love for me that I've come to know God in a very personal and loving way. Take Norm Bennett, for example, a bank loan officer who came to St. Joseph's from Chicago 10 years ago with his wife, Joanne, and three children, each one now active in the parish. I really became active for the first time in my life uh, at St. Joseph's uh, about uh, six or seven years ago. My first encounter with, with ministry was through the choir uh, here at St. Joe's, the adult choir, and uh, from that it spread into uh, Eucharistic ministry to the homebound uh, uh, Eucharistic ministry here within the parish itself at liturgical services. Uh, I became involved with evangelization uh, and, and ran that program for a while here at St. Joe's. Uh, I've done a number of different things, uh, including lecturing and cantering. As I mentioned before, you know, it, it was really the first time I ever became actively involved in, in church. But I think more importantly, it was the first time I ever recognized the church as being a real family. And uh, I celebrate that and give thanks for that. Bob and Tammy Zorowski are also 10-year members of the parish. In fact, they met and married here and welcomed their two-and-a-half-year-old Kate and one-and-a-half-year-old David to the family here. Bob's an aerospace engineer, and guess what? Tammy's an aerospace engineer, too. Both worked at NASA till Tammy decided there was more important work for her to do in the family and in the parish. We had a lot of trouble conceiving a child and so when I became pregnant with Kate I came to Father Don actually and said you know God's given us this miracle and I want to do something you know to help out and so he said well why don't you start working with the church. So long-range planning needed some people, and so I worked with that while I was pregnant with Kate, and then a little bit after she was born. The fruits of St. Joseph's long-range planning committee were harvested by the 50th anniversary year, with more and versatile gathering rooms where ministries can meet. In fact, construction was preceded by an expansion of the school, now operated jointly with St. John Newman Parish, and allowing the opening of two new kindergarten rooms and adding a gymnasium. On June the 9th, 1996, Bishop Anthony Pilla arrived to dedicate the new facilities of St. Joseph Parish that would now accommodate a community of some 2,500 families, more than 8,000 people, celebrating the Eucharist at 15 regularly scheduled Masses each week and meeting for many, many other services and gatherings. But the wise bishop knew that the buildings themselves are not that important, as he pointed out in his homily. I'm here not to celebrate these buildings. I'm here to celebrate you, the wonderful people of St. Joseph's Parish in Strongsville. For 50 years, you and those who have preceded you have been rooted in fidelity to that love. Look at your program. Remember those words, rooted in love. And for 50 years, you have been rooted in love. You have been rooted in faith. In this place, saint and sinner have found comfort and solace. In this place, saint and sinner have found courage and even challenge. For 50 years, children and adults have been welcomed into the very heart of the church through the cleansing waters of baptism. They have been anointed and gifted by the Holy Spirit. They have received the holiest food and drink possible. For 50 years, women and men, children and adults have been reconciled to God and one another. They have been anointed with a balm that heals the sick soul. They have been married, they have lived single lives, they have entered religious life and have become priests from this place. For 50 years, this church has not only welcomed saint and sinner, but it has aided both in going home to God. From the womb to the tomb, this church has been involved in care for its people. But my dear people, God is not through with you yet. 
you must continue to grow in that love. Thank you. Thank you. And may God, who has begun the great work in you, bring it to completion. As I stand here on this beautiful sunny afternoon and look around these beautiful grounds, I, I think what a mud hole this was and now what beautiful buildings we had. We have, a, after two years of construction, but that's not what I want to remember this beautiful afternoon. What I want to remember is the hopes I have for this parish because what we've built is not just buildings, it's mostly people. And I'm just so hopeful for the coming years of what we've been developing in this parish in terms of ministries. You've seen so many things that have gone on in this parish thanks to the, the good people that have been here for 50 years. But I see so much promise for things that aren't being done that will happen, spiritual needs of our people that are going to be ministered to very soon. And I think as a priest, I'm very hopeful that people will take ministry into their own hands, that a priest used to do everything in the eyes of people and, and now will will do what is his rightful place in terms of spiritual leadership, but it's the church of the people and the people need to, to take more involvement, people need to take more participation because the church is yours and we look inside the church, we look for the people, where are the people? You are the people.